Welcome to I Can Science That. And this afternoon, I had a discussion with Bev Try Thinking uh, about a water level test that he has conducted. As we discussed, I'm hoping we're going to have a follow up live chat, but I wanted to get this out there right away because I don't know exactly when we'll be able to schedule that. So for now, there was some question about whether I fully understood Bev's test and how it worked. So I'd like to take this opportunity to echo back to you exactly what I understood of how it worked. Please let me know, throw in the comments right away if there's anything about this that I am describing incorrectly and straighten me out about that before we even talk. Okay, all right, so here's Bev's water level test. Um, we start with the water level. It's a very long water level and it has four risers on it. Uh, by very long, my understanding was that from the first from the first riser to the next, that's a 200 meter section of water tube. And then there's a 100 meter section and another 100 meter section. So this whole thing here is, uh, I understand, uh, that would make that 400 meters long. Correct me if I've got those numbers wrong. Honestly, the numbers shouldn't be that crucial if we agree that this is a very long water level and it should be long enough that if there's any curvature in the surface of the water, we should be able to detect it, right? That's the point. I believe that's the point here. Okay, and then we bring in a second water level of the same design pointing the other way. Overlapped like so. So here we have another water level. I've drawn this one in red so that we can see the difference between the two. And this is supposed to represent a 200 meter gap, a 100 meter gap, a 100 meter gap. And these pair of risers, I've got them drawn very close to each other to indicate that those are, in reality, those were set up very close to each other so that the two tubes are adjacent, that we could see, that we could compare the water level between those two tubes. Now, Bev had asked specifically as I draw this diagram, could I please put a, an observer, a human being at either end? So let's do that. Put uh, stick stick person lady over there at, at the one end and at the other end we have a, a stick man. How do we perform the actual test? What are the measurements that we take? What we do is we, we start here on the left and then we'll walk to the first pair of risers. So let's say one riser from each of the water levels that and they are adjacent. They're near each other. And because they're near each other, it's very easy to measure the difference between their water levels at that point. Just hold up a ruler and you can just measure how high, what is the difference, right, between those two. So if there's a little bit of an offset, put a ruler and just measure how, what's the difference between those water levels. Then we'll walk 100 meters to the next pair of risers and do the same thing. Compare them and measure the displacement between them. Write that down. Then go to the third pair and measure their displacement. As I've drawn here, the understanding that Bev's team is working with comes from something that was stated multiple times as the law of communicating vessels. And Bev's team has interpreted that law of communicating vessels to mean that all this, the, the surface, these surface points of this contained vessel, right, the same vessel, here, this water is all connected, unbroken throughout this red tube. And so their interpretation of the law of communicating vessels is that all four of those points must be at the exact same plane. They must form a plane. Um, and then we have another one here, this green one, that also forms a plane, right? There's a second plane. Uh, and since we overlap the two planes, we're overlapping those two planes at those three points, meaning those planes are in fact coplanar. It is one plane that they share, right? So that is the understanding, that is my, that is my understanding of this test and how it was performed and what it is based on. And ultimately, um, what I think is, is worth noting about this test is that it is based on the understanding 
that these four points, one, two, three, four, these four risers on the connected water level must be in a single plane, right? That is the point that I think we should be investigating because that is the point where this version differs from mainstream science, all right? So uh, let me now illustrate how this exact same test performed in the exact same way is predicted to come out according to mainstream science. Now, um, I don't want to say this is right. I'll even back away from saying this is what I believe. Let's just say I understand that there are two hypotheses here, and this really should be considered as one of them. This is taught as a mainstream science, right? This is what science says the world looks like. I've hugely exaggerated the curvature, but they say we live on a giant globe, right? A, a great sphere, spheroid, if, if you will. So here I have my two people at either end, and we're going to bring in a water level. So mainstream science says that a great honking water level laid down on the curve of the earth will produce levels like so, where these don't form a plane, but in fact, they form a great sphere. They are all touching the same sphere. And then let's bring in the red one. We'll bring in the red one. And those risers, according to globe hypothesis, those should also rise to the exact same point uh, of the same sphere. So we don't have we do not have, in this theory, a single plane for these four points. Those are not coplanar. Those, are, those lie along a sphere. And if we slice it right for the diagram, that'll be a circle. Before I go on, let's say, I'm not saying this is reality. I'm saying this is the globe prediction. The question at hand is whether or not reality matches either of our two predictions right? The test, to be, to be useful as a test, the test needs to show that we'll get a different result under one or the other prediction so that we can then go out to reality and see which of the two predictions we got, All right, That's how a test works. So let's perform that same test that we did uh, before and we'll just show it on this diagram and see how it differs. So we start at the one end and the observer walks to the first pair of risers and measures the, dist the difference between the two water levels. And then he walks to the second pair of risers, measures the difference. The third pair of risers measures the two, difference, the, the two distances and then we're done. Now. Uh, what are we predicting for the globe version? As I've tried to illustrate here with this diagram, the globe predicts that the green level and the red level will be the same. If they were filled to the same level to begin with, they will always stay at that same level. Under the globe version, the law of communicating vessels says that this is what happens that those four points do not form a plane, but instead they form a sphere. And there's then, then follows a great deal of confusion about where, what's the high point of the sphere, what's the low point of the sphere. Under the globe version, the concept of up is away from the center of the sphere. So these four points of water are the exact same distance from the center of the sphere. So none of them is higher than any other. They are all at the same potential, right? They're all at the same height above the center point, right? Um, uh, let me just say it one more time. I'm not saying that that's true. I'm just saying that's what the globe version predicted, right? That's what, that's what it says. 
So if we can understand that's what the model says, we don't have to agree with the model. We just understand that that's what it says. Uh, neither of these two viewers is higher than the other. Uh, on the screen, the stick man is higher than the stick woman in, in screen space, but not in world space, right? In world space, they are at the same height. The last thing I'll say here is that many people expressed that they thought that this was absurd. The idea that vertical is a different angle at different locations and that as we walk along the surface, we're constantly updating our vertical. That's absurd. And sure, you, you may feel that that, that that seems absurd, but saying that's absurd is not a logical argument. Saying your idea seems absurd is not critical thinking. What is critical thinking is to design a test that can show that one or another of these versions is not true. So let me get right down to brass tacks here. What is the prediction for this water level test under the globe version? We predict that the, the two tubes, the adjacent risers, will have water levels that are right at the same level or are offset by the exact same amount on each of the three pairs of tubes. And not too coincidentally, that's exactly what the planar version also predicts. So that's the problem with this test as stated. It makes the same prediction for both models and therefore cannot discriminate between them. However, I think this diagram suggests to you a way that you could test it. You could use your self same water levels to do a test fairly easily to discriminate between those. And maybe that's something we can talk about uh, later. If there's anything about this test that I have misunderstood or misrepresented, please just throw it right down in the comments uh, and we can then discuss it further uh, in our live chat when we get that scheduled. If you're here to tell me that I don't know what the globe version says, I, I guess I'm open to being corrected, but I'm pretty sure this is the model uh, and you're going to need to be extremely specific about what is incorrect in this diagram. That's it for tonight. Looking forward to hearing from you. I'll talk to you soon.